We've been living in Japan for over three and a half years now, and in that time, we've been extensively researching Japanese food, be it through shooting documentaries with some of Japan's most revered chefs, to traveling all over Japan to a lot of farms and factories to learn about Japanese products. We taste and document it all on this channel. What's that? You calling me a hipster? You calling me a foodie? You got them right. We take this seriously. And in the time we've been here in Japan, we've learned a lot of things about food culture. So today, we're gonna give you some tips on how to eat like a local rather than as a tourist. And at the same time, we're gonna dispel some of the myths you heard about Japanese food, especially when it comes to sushi, because there's a lot of bullshit online about that. And we need to dispel that. No more of these dumb sushi rules you've seen online. Let me tell you what it's all about. Before you head out and start eating everything in Japan, first things first, you need to open a computer and head on over to Tabalog. FYI, this is not a paid advertisement. Tabalog is just a really big deal here. I'm not adverse to doing a paid advertisement with Tabalog. Tabalog, yeah, my number. Call me with two phones at once. Tabalog is hands down the best food review system in Japan. It's what people in Japan use the most, not Yelp not anything else. Use Yelp if you want to see how foreigners feel about restaurants here. Use Tabalog if you want to see what people living in Japan like. Now Tabalog isn't a small review site either. It's really serious stuff. Their annual award ceremony brings in some of Japan's most revered chefs. It's kind of like the Oscars for Japanese chefs. There are even some famous Tabalog reviewers, like there are famous YouTubers. Sometimes a positive review from one of these reviewers can change a business overnight and there will be lineups outside of the place for weeks. The gold medal recipients of the Tabalog Awards are kind of like our food bucket list. We've been to a bunch of these restaurants already and I wish that we could go to all of them. We've been to Amamoto, we've been to Effervescence, we've been to Miyoshi, we've been to Saito. You've seen the video on that. We've been to Sugalabo. Locally grown asparagus and truffles are in season right now. This needs to be at least five times bigger. Seen the video on that as well. We've been to Suzuway. I wish we could do a video about that place. And we've also been to Yanagiya, which you've seen a video about, and Tenzushi, which as well you've seen a video about. What we're trying to say is we really like food. We really, really care about food. For regular days though, when we're not going high end, we use it for whenever we're looking for a new category of food, like ramen or unagi or even desserts. Or we use it if we're exploring a new part of town and we want to see what's really the best in that area. Nikume, Oregon stew. Oops. Online food review sites like Tabalog and Google are also really important for you to know business hours because business hours in Japan are f***ing weird. Oh, Simon. We've walked past this place 11 times. We've only got to go in once. Every other time it's closed. It's maddening. It's open between 11.30 and 1.30 is last order. And I think it's actually closed these days of the week. But I think also it depends on the full moon. If there's a full moon the night before, then it's only open every 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have to go through that portal in the train station at Harry Potter's where you walk through the brick wall and then you get there. Then you gotta swing on a vine. Then you gotta make a blood sacrifice. These schedules make no sense to me at all. Grumpy, really wanted this ramen. It can be mega frustrating if you're on vacation in Japan and you aim to go to a place that's like a bucket list and you get there and it's closed. Here are the three things you need to know about business hours in Japan. Number one, unless you are a chain restaurant, every business has different business hours because most of our favorite food comes from local mom and pop shops. You gotta kinda get to know what their hours are. So this is our favorite udon shop. It's closed on every single Thursday consistently, but every once in a while they're closed on a Friday and sometimes they're closed on a Saturday and they post a schedule manually on this little cork board so that you can see how the hours change each month. If it's not possible for you to come in person to check the shop, which I totally understand, that's where you want to check things out on Tabalog, Google Maps, or even find their Twitter account or their Facebook page where they'll post more personal messages like, sorry guys, we're closed today for an emergency. 
Second thing is be aware that most of the small shops will have a last order for the afternoon as well as a break time between lunch and dinner. Majority of shops we know tend to be open between 11 and let's say three o'clock for lunch hours, but last order will be around two or 2.30, which means there's this bizarre limbo between 2.30 and five or 6 p.m. where nothing seems to be open in Japan. And that's when you can head to like a convenience store and grab an onigiri or get an egg salad sandwich or maybe check out a chain restaurant. What up, home fry? Just having a normal snack. Delicious soft boiled egg with a delicious carton of milk because Japan has the best milk I've ever had. And then a vitamin bag. I don't know if these bags are lying, but I like having my 12 vitamins given to me in chopped up jelly format. <laughs> Gotta keep those little muscles going. Bring the camera to me. Lawson's has my favorite hard boiled eggs. <gasps> Is that it? We're in 7-Eleven. Eating a delicious ramen egg. You don't even know how creamy these are. It's like creamy level mouthfeel. I feel like making a video about top five things about Japan you should do. I'm like, eat an egg. That's right, I said it. Mm. Sorry, vegans, vegetarians, you can swing this, right? Pescatarians, you good. Gluten free, you got this. No carb. This is your jam. What's that one when you're a caveman? When you're like, I only eat caveman food. Paleo. Paleo. You can do this. Really? It's like the winning food. And the third thing I wanted to talk about was between 11 and 3 p.m. There tends to be a lunch set. And of course it's different for each restaurant, but they'll usually include a drink of some kind, maybe like an iced coffee or a hot coffee, sometimes an even alcoholic drink if you want. When you arrive at dinner time, that lunch set just doesn't exist anymore. Let's go to a less noisy area for the next points, shall we? Let's do it. Let's do that. Good thing about midweek parking, a lot of people don't know about the secret spots. This one is usually <laughs> full on the weekend, but we find... Thing is also, I'm not sure how this is not a fire hazard. This it's seems... Like under a stair, it's like so Harry Potter. This is just... What am I doing here? All right, watch out. It's pretty, pretty tight. Let me take you to another point now. Now you could find yourself in a situation in which you're traveling to Japan and you don't have any data or Wi-Fi on your phone. How do you know what's a good place to eat? A very easy rule is to get into any line that you see for a restaurant. In Japan, golden rule, get in the line. It is worth the wait. For real, I'm not used to waiting in lines back in Canada and I know a lot of people who will see a line and just walk away. You see this lineup right here? Get into it. Even if you don't know what it is, get into it. Most of the time they have very, very good food. This rule, however, does not apply on the weekends because on the weekends, many more people are out and you'll even see lineups in front of chains. For real, this line literally doubled since we started filming this. We did a video about this place before. They are really, really, really good meatballs. I'm, I mean, have you seen the video of my dad? It's unbelievable. And you wonder where I swear from. This is my dad oh, that taught me. It's like, like orgasm. Okay. Oh, easy dad. Another tip, this is Kichijoji Station. It is always hella busy. Why are all these people here? Because the rent is so expensive around the station, it's mostly just chains you're gonna find. about five to 10 minutes away from the station, a whole new world of possibilities will emerge. Seriously, this is where you're getting more of like the mom and pop shops, the places that have been here for a while that have a lot of character. So go for it, five to 10 minutes away and find yourself something that's like local and something that will have like a really impactful memory in your heart. Did I mention that we're hipster foodies? Yep. Cause we're hipster foodies. I'm wearing heart glasses in an unironic way. And look, this little Foley thing. What am I, one of those women? I don't know. Just do it because I like it. It's a romper. Rompers are so, so hipstery, except such a pain in the butt when you have to pee. Just gotta get totally naked. Let me tell you, awkward on the plane. Learn my lesson once on that. What's that? My backpack has a cat? Oh my God, she's also a weeb. It's all of it mashed together. And I'm Canadian and I'm a girl and I have EDS and I'm doing okay. You're doing great.
Now, you're not going to be able to get all of your restaurant recommendations online. One of the best things that you could do is when you go to like busy bars like this, especially when you have communal tables and what you're sharing them with strangers, ask other people where they like to eat. Ask them for the recommendations. In fact, if you've seen our Rome and Barcelona video, some of our best spots that we filmed were based on people's recommendations. So ask other people. Don't be afraid. They'll give you a good list of restaurants and make sure you check those out because they know better. I mean, a big piece of chicken. You know what? It's Canada Day. Mmm. Half a Canada Day. Yeah. Right? My mic cannot hear anything that you're saying, girl. It's sushi myth busting time. It's time for us to bust some sushi myths. Why did I punch? Punch them away. That's what I did. That's right, crying baby. There are a lot of things going around the internet that are just totally incorrect about sushi. Here's something we need to dispel right away. Do you use chopsticks or do you use your hands? It doesn't matter. For those of you that have said you're not supposed to use chopsticks, why would the chef put chopsticks in front of you then? Do you think it's some kind of trap to get unsuspecting foreigners deported from the country? No, if you want to use chopsticks, use the chopsticks that are provided. Don't come in there with your own chopsticks that you're unsheathing because that would just be a little bit weird. But whatever you're comfortable with, please use that. Let's talk about soy sauce and wasabi. So to begin with, if you go to a high-end restaurant, this is no longer a problem for you because a high-end sushi chef is going to prepare the piece for you. But if you're gonna go to a shop that does have soy sauce or wasabi on the table, this one I like a lot because it has a little kind of soft, bubbly, spongy button. And it's basically for dispensing a single drop of soy sauce at a time. So I just use that to individually apply to the outside of my sushi piece. So when you get a piece of sushi, if you drop it into your soy sauce dish and then it just like absorbs everything like a sponge, Good luck even trying to pick that piece up. You'll pick it up, it'll just shred apart everywhere. It's not good. It's like over soaking cereal. So that's the only thing you're trying to avoid. The next thing I wanted to spell is a very important one. This gets me upset the most. Who told you you're supposed to pick up a piece and flip it upside down so that the fish touches your tongue first? In every single sushi restaurant that we've been in, we have not seen one single person do that, Japanese or otherwise. We've even asked the chefs, none of them have heard of this. Please, don't flip your sushi piece. That's madness. And whoever writes that needs to be fired. All right? It's call garbage. The, call the sushi police. It's garbage, okay? For those of you that are saying you're supposed to make the fish touch your tongue first because it's most important, no. A lot of sushi chefs pride themselves on their rice first. Their rice is what's more important. It's, ah, just silly. All right. Here's, I'm supposed to flip this upside down. I know, right? <laughs> oh. How would you do that? No. The only hard and fast rule that we've heard from every sushi place that we've been to and every sushi chef that we've spoken with is eat the piece right away. Don't let them put it in front of you and you sit and you talk for a few minutes. They've really calculated the right temperature, the right density of the rice. You sometimes see the rice sinking a little bit because of the air in between them. It's really important. Eat the piece first and do all your talking afterwards. You'll even see some chefs that whenever someone leaves to the bathroom, they won't prepare their piece. They'll wait until the person comes back so they can serve it to them at an optimum temperature. So cool. Uh. Okay, this next point is a little bit difficult to explain because a lot of people have seen a very famous documentary. The setting there is very stern and very strict and very quiet. Not all sushi places are like that. A lot of high-end sushi shops try to make the customers comfortable and laugh. My dish. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> we'll be right back, guys. Oh, yeah. Mm. Right, back to okay. high end. Ba back to high end. Back to high end sushi. When you go somewhere like Saito, you'll hear the room more food. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be hang on right back a second. Let me just get hold some on. food. Sorry, sorry guys. Okay. It's my fully. All right, hold on. Where were we? Okay. Saito sushi, high end. All right, back high to end. high end dining. Whenever we go to Saito, it's never solemn or quiet. You hear people laughing and talking the whole time. That's the job of a good sushi chef to make you comfortable as they're making really good food. So when you go to a high-end place, make sure you feel the atmosphere of the room. If everybody's quiet, then be a little bit more quiet. If everybody's laughing around and joking, laugh around and joke as well. Not everything is supposed to be super militant, 
eat your sushi, oof, and leave. Doesn't work that way, all right? <laughs> I like your bow with oof. 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 You can't even say delicious, oof, and leave. And None leave. of that. Calm down, all right? We need to lower the intensity a bit, people. Here's the all knob. Right? We're going to just Dial that down. shit down. They're people. Yeah, acting a little weird. Now there's something else we have to address, and that's Jiro Dreams of Sushi. A lot of people have seen the documentary. It's beautiful, we both loved it, but for some reason, some people think that Jiro is the greatest sushi chef in the world, and everybody else is chump change. That's simply not true. Take a look at Tabalog rankings. You can see where Jiro ranks compared to other chefs, and every year it changes and grows. You have to keep up to date with the time. The point that I'm trying to say is, don't just take the word of some American documentary makers. Take the word of two Canadian YouTubers. We know best. Make sure you like and smash the subscribe button because we got the real information for you. We never go out of style. We never go out we of We never days. go out of day. We've never We're done anything. We're always hip and trendy with the times. Oh no, awkward picture proof from the past that we have indeed not been in style, but we have always been foodies. Please share any tips you have on food culture in Japan with us all in the comment section below. And if you disagree with us, let us know as well. If you'd like to see the bloopers and some extra footage, check over here on Simon and Martina Bonus.